It's a great day for Colorado State University, the College of Applied Human Sciences, the Department of Health and Exercise Science, and the Human Performance Clinical Research Lab. Of course, days like this aren't possible without great leadership, and so we need to acknowledge the tremendous faculty that have made this program what it is. We also need to thank all of you, our donors and supporters. Your gifts really represent an investment in the research that will go on in these laboratories, an investment that we think you'll see pay off with improved lives. The Human Performance Clinical Research Laboratory at Colorado State University plays a very special role here on campus. Through excellence in research, the lab strives to discover new knowledge in health and exercise sciences. Moreover, we disseminate that knowledge through academic and community outreach programs. As our population ages, this biomedical research becomes all the more relevant. Healthy lifestyle choices can help prevent and treat many of the major chronic diseases our society is faced with. In recognition of our work here, the laboratory has recently been designated a university program of research and scholarly excellence. Let's meet just a few of the people who make this possible. Well, my lab in particular is interested in studying hypoxia and redox imbalance. And this is a, an important area of research because these stresses are components um, that may contribute to both the pathogenesis and the progression of many chronic diseases. We study the wasting process with aging. And our goal in this lab is not necessarily to make anybody live to 130 years old, but we want to make a person happy and healthy for all the years of their lives. In our laboratory, we're interested in studying um, and learning about how blood flow and oxygen delivery is controlled uh, to skeletal muscle. We are interested in physical activity as it relates to human health and prevention of disease. And so we're really interested in getting people to move more often. We study some of the good things about exercise and nutrition um, that can make a person healthy and how that works and why it works. We do a lot of our studies uh, trying to figure out why certain changes in the cardiovascular system occur as we get older and why that makes us more susceptible to the development of cardiovascular diseases. How does that change over the course of normal healthy aging? How does that change even further, typically not for the good, in certain disease populations? And how can we potentially work back to figure out how to make the function better in certain populations? We know that sedentary lifestyles and acquisition of gradual weight gain don't result in really good health outcomes for anybody. People don't like how they feel. They're at risk of chronic diseases. They tend not to live as long. You know, the quality of life while they're alive is reduced. So there's a lot of really um, unfortunate consequences of those kinds of behaviors. Right now we're kind of highlighting those of us who, who do the basic and applied research to understand chronic disease and the impact of physical activity or inactivity. But the other um, portions of our department are responsible for that outreach. You know, we have programs that are reaching the youth during the summer we have programs that are um, reaching people who are perhaps already predisposed to disease and towards the um, other end of their lifespan. It's a unique department in that we do everything from understanding the molecule all the way through translating what that means to, to the public. It matters for a lot of reasons. It matters because the information is important. It matters because the problem is important. It matters because the people are important and it matters because we need to continue to funnel bright, talented, young, motivated people to be contributors in this area. This level of basic and applied biomedical research can only happen when the right facilities and infrastructure are in place. We're not only meeting those needs, but also attaining LEED Goal certification, and that's very unique and difficult to obtain for a lab addition. We're real fortunate to have the space we have here. Um, I make my home in two different spaces, one being this clinical lab, and I had a hand in designing exactly what I needed for my space. We have one big shared space, and within that space we have an area for molecular biology, an area for physiology, an area for cell culture, and these spaces are all shared by all the faculty and all the students. This shared resources philosophy actually, I believe, is going to result in better science and better students to come from the program because we all work together to do it. Upgrading the labs, increasing lab space, basically improving general facilities, all of that is going to make you uh, be able to compete 
for that National Institutes of Health level of funding as if you were almost part of a medical center. With a facility like this and the resources that we now have available, we're highly competitive, so absolutely critical for us being um, a successfully funded research facility. Of course, the students are involved in all aspects of our work here. As you can imagine, they give us the most important feedback of all. The program of health and exercise science overall is a very good place uh, to um, help you to um, pursue your goals and um, with having a friendly environment and very good um, facilities around, uh, you can definitely be successful. I ideally would like to incorporate what I've learned here as a physician. Um, I think that exercise and nutrition, which is you know, the basis of this um, department, really have a big impact in uh, how a physician can provide care. CSU basically says, we want you to flourish, we want you to blossom, we give you the resources, the opportunities to do that, and if you're interested, go for it. As you can tell, we are very proud of this new addition. Even more so, I'm proud to be associated with the outstanding faculty, staff, and students of this department. Every day we get to see the best and brightest in these labs. Of course, none of this would be possible without support from the university and the generous support of our donors we are recognizing here today.